If you're a woman who's having trouble sleeping, then listen up to today's video all about different hormonal balances and how they contribute to sleep and insomnia. If you want to learn more about your hormones, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Friday. If you're new to this channel, I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer, and I'm a registered dietitian, functional medicine physician, and family medicine physician. And I help women get off that roller coaster of hormone imbalance that could happen, especially in the ages of perimenopause between 35 and 50, but really any hormonal roller coaster. Um, I mean, any age that when you're on a hormonal roller coaster, we talk about on this channel. And we get you off of that roller coaster and we get you to a balanced state where you can reclaim that feminine energy and feel like yourself again. So if that sounds good to you, remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And that helps keep the channel strong and, and helps keep me being able to make new videos. So let's dive into today's topic where we are going to talk about insomnia or sleep disruptions and hormonal balance. So first, let's dive into each. Well, first, let's talk about what hormonal balances can cause sleep disruptions or insomnia and what I mean by sleep disruptions or insomnia. So what I mean by that is if you can't fall asleep or not just if you can't fall asleep, insomnia also means if you can't stay asleep, there are different types of insomnia. And some of us have gone our whole lives being great sleepers. And then especially as women, we get to a certain age, like maybe between 35 and 50, our perimenopause ages, and it just changes all together. So that could be some of the hormone imbalances that we're talking about today. And then sometimes they can be related to other things. So the four main hormone imbalances that I see that contribute to insomnia and sleep disturbances are estrogen dominance, high cortisol or cortisol overload from stress, um, progesterone deficiency, and estrogen deficiency. So Oftentimes, we don't have all of those going on, particularly high estrogen or estrogen dominance and low estrogen, but some can coexist together. So just keep that in mind. So let's dive into each one of these. Um, estrogen dominance. So this is when your estrogen is kind of out numbers your progesterone, and that's perfectly natural in parts of your cycle. You can see that in different phases of your cycle on this graphic here, that in different phases of your cycle you are going to have more estrogen than you have progesterone in particularly in like days 10 through 14 with day one being the first day of bleeding. So days 10 through 14, when you're in that kind of ovulatory phase, you are going to have more estrogen than progesterone, but that can be worsened in some women, maybe due to lifestyle factors, diet, genetics, um, stress, and you can have a bigger difference between your estrogen and progesterone. And that's what we call estrogen dominance. So some women, particularly in that ovulation phase, that PMS kind of that mid cycle, they can get a worsening of their sleep or in other symptoms of estrogen dominance, which I have talked about in other videos. And I will link that um, here. And then I'll have some upcoming ones on it as well. But so estrogen dominance, when you have that imbalance between estrogen and progesterone can be a big trigger for insomnia. And that's why, like I said, mid cycle, some women can have some worsening of their insomnia. What potentially triggers that? Well, like I said, taking in too much xenoestrogens can, like I've talked about in some of my other videos, and that could be in the form of um, like plastics or water that hasn't been filtered appropriately and has some kind of um, organophosphates and things like that in there. Um, pesticides, which are, which can be organophosphates, um, can uh, cause your estrogen to be dominant because they can act like xenoestrogens are things that act like estrogens in your body. Um, phthalates also, and those can be found in some of your plastic products. They can be found in some cosmetics. They can be found in some surfaces that you might be eating off of. Um, also in some other products that might touch your skin. And parabens as well can be in your cosmetics and your, and your beauty products. PVCs can be in there and those can contribute to estrogen dominance. So we're going to talk a bit more about this in the next video. And I have talked about it in some other videos. So what we can do about it, though, is make sure we're having good bowel movements, eating that 30 to 35 grams of fiber that I talk about so much, filtering our water, eating organic foods as much as we can afford, 
and lowering our alcohol and our sugar in our lives, and that can help you beat that estrogen dominance. So let's talk about the next pattern, high cortisol. Now that's very, very common. I see that in a lot of the women and men in my practice. So cortisol is one of our stress hormones, and it's supposed to be lower at night. It's supposed to um, at a, be at a certain point in the morning and then rise up after waking to kind of get you ready for your day. It goes back down into the afternoon and then it kind of gradually drops down into the evening. And when we've had a high stress time period in our lives, we often have that kind of reversed pattern of our cortisol and we can have high levels at night and therefore not be able to sleep as well. So this can even happen right in the time of the stress, either a mental like a external stressor, like typical thoughts of stress, like how we picture that, or like a disease or, you know, having a big stress on our body in a physical way. It could be at the time of any of those stressors, or it could be maybe even years later, our body just didn't bounce back like it was supposed to and our cortisol flipped and it it just didn't respond the way it was supposed to and didn't go back down at night. It stayed. It got used to being hyperstimulated and stayed high at night. So that can be why that's happening. And then trauma as well. That's another stressor that can do that. So even when you have like, also in addition, if you have sleep patterns in college or you're on night shift that really screw your sleep up and cause your cortisol to be used to being elevated at night and your melatonin to not kick in at night, that can contribute to sleep problems as well. So you're just out of rhythm in your cortisol. So what can we do about that? Well, we want to first work on the stressors. So we want to give our body the relaxation techniques, the deep breathing, meditation, journaling, even biofeedback to give it the message that you're out of that time of stress and that you can relax now. And that takes a lot of practice. You really have to incorporate that into your lives. Also reducing um, caffeine and alcohol and sugar. Same kind of adding that caffeine in there, but the same techniques for estrogen dominance. And then finding a good a good nighttime routine, like making the lights dim, staying away from any kind of artificial light like um, the TV, especially like blue light from your devices, that kind of thing. Wearing amber glasses, which I've talked about on my channel, and I'll have some links and affiliate links in the description down below, just of some that I've tried and recommend. And then considering herbs and nutrients, and I'll have some ideas for that below too. And then a link to um, another video on cortisol and sleep. Are you having trouble sleeping? You probably are if you're watching this video. So remember to comment down below and let other women know what you have done, what you've struggled with, so we can all be a community. And we just all want to remember that we're not in it alone. A lot of us are going through this and we can share with each other what really has helped or what we might be going through. So progesterone deficiency would be number three in our cortisol patterns that we're talking about that interrupt our sleep. So progesterone is supposed to surge in the luteal phase in that second half of the cycle. So if it does not come back and surge like it's supposed to, then we might sleep very poorly in the second half of our cycle in that kind of PMS phase. And then also when we're in this 35 to 50, this perimenopause age that I talk about a lot on my channel and that I'm focused on a lot, we may have a natural progesterone deficiency. It just kind of gradually goes down and down and down. And so we need to work on that. And then also if our estrogen is dominant, so we go back to number one, if our estrogen is dominant, then our progesterone can be low. And then we have those feelings of sleep problems just from having both coexist, the estrogen dominance and the progesterone deficiency. And then if our cortisol is imbalanced, so number two hormonal pattern, if that's off, we can have progesterone deficiency or genetics sometimes can interfere. So working on the estrogen dominance and the cortisol um, elevation like or flipping, like we talked about in the above steps, can be um, one way to deal with it. Also, there are some herbs that I talk about on my channel, like one that helps helps progesterone sometimes is Vitex. And you do want to discuss these with their natural health provider. You could also consider trying a bioidentical hormone replacement of progesterone, like a um, particularly for when we're talking about sleep or anxiety, we want to use a, a compounded bioidentical oral capsule micronized progesterone. And we start usually anywhere between 50 and 100 milligrams, but you do have to make sure that progesterone is safe for you. If you have um, progesterone sensitive breast cancer, if you've had that, or someone like your mother, sister, you definitely want to talk about that with a, uh, your provider. 
and see if it's appropriate for you. It's probably not in those cancer cases or in cases of blood clot, but in other women, it could be very safe and very effective for progesterone imbalance and sleep in perimenopause. Estrogen deficiency is the last one we're going to talk about. If you're feeling night sweats or hot flashes um, and you're in those ages between 35 and 50, or if you've gone through menopause, if you've like had your last period and it's been a year and you're still in postmenopause and having those hot flashes and night sweats, then you want to discuss that with your provider and consider, do you need bioidentical hormone? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you want to go a different route and you want to try like black cohosh or dong kwai. And I'll have some recommendations down below and always discuss that with your natural health care provider also. But there's other things like a chilling pillow. And I have some ideas on those down below to keep you cooler at night, um, keeping your room nice and cool at 68 degrees or even cooler, maybe peppermint oil, keeping some of that next to your bed, some diluted peppermint oil and rubbing that on your wrists, maybe on your ankles and here and maybe right on the chest. So be sure to check out the PDF or the, um, I'm sorry, to sign up for my free uh, training. That's called Hormone Balance for Busy Women. And then I also have very helpful PDFs if you sign up for our email list. And then stay tuned to the channel for more information on hormone balance where I post new videos every Friday. And please like, share, and subscribe. That keeps the channel going. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.